Hello and welcome to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, women's holistic health coach and fellow recovering perfectionist. This podcast was created to show you that your body is not in the way, it is actually leading your way. Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio. But again, I'm your host, Lauren, and this is episode 74, Sacred Breathing with Jen Broyles. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to take a second and talk about magnesium. Last episode 73 with Kristen Bowen, we talk all about transdermal magnesium. I have been taking magnesium for years, and did you know that less than 1% of magnesium taken orally is actually absorbed by the body? Since I started using Living the Good Life Naturally, which is Kristen Bowen's brand, I have noticed such a huge difference with my magnesium absorption. So you can get magnesium through foods, traditionally comes from dark leafy greens, pumpkin seeds, almonds, fish, beans, whole grains, dried fruit, avocados, dark chocolate, and so much more. But the problem today is that our modern farming practices use heavy use of chemicals and over-circulation or monocrop, which has stripped our soil of the essential biological and organic interactions that allow plants to uptake the magnesium that they need. As the soil becomes more depleted of this biological interaction, our food continues to decline in the essential magnesium element. This is true for magnesium, but so many of the other micronutrients. So what physical and psychological ailments are affected by magnesium deficiency? Well, magnesium deficiency plays a role in many of human diseases and ailments, including anxiety and panic attacks, hello 2020, asthma, blood clots, bowel diseases, depression, fatigue, heart disease, hypertension, insomnia, kidney disease, liver disease, migraines, hello, nerve problems, tooth decay, and so much more. If you're interested in learning more, click on the link below, Living the Good Life Naturally, and I do love their products so much. Just a disclaimer, I am an affiliate, but if you use the code WITCHY, W-I-T-C-H-Y, you will get 10% off your offer. And depending upon when you order, I know they are having a calm Black Friday sale, and you might actually get an additional 10% off that Black Friday price. Back to today's show, I have a fellow essential oil wellness advocate and coach on the show today. Jen Broyles is a holistic health coach and Selma breathwork instructor. We talk all about breathwork, why breathwork is important, for your entire body and your nervous system, what it actually activates by doing breath work, and what the Soma breath work experience is all about. I have yet to experience this. I am trying to get on the Soma breath work train. Basically, think of a yoga class, but just for breathing. Awesome. Jen focuses the impact of chronic stress, gut health, and emotional imprints that may help keep people stuck in their current condition, and she helps them break free. We also talk about Jen's sacred breathing community, essential oils for anxiety, stress, and just 2020 in general. We also talk about how Jen's backstory started from pharmaceutical sales to now teaching sacred breathing. Wow, quite the jump, isn't it? And why breathwork is just so powerful and so much more. So without further ado, please enjoy the beautiful episode number 74, Sacred Breathing with Jen Broyles. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio. And again, I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, and this is a show you get to learn that your body is not in your way, but actually leading your way. And today we have the beautiful Jen Broyles on the show, and we get to learn more about breath work. And that's a point example of how your body is leading your way. Um, more on Jen before we jump into this juicy interview. Jen Broyles is a holistic health coach 
and a Soma breathwork instructor and is a fellow essential oils coach, just like me. We love doTERRA and founder of the Sacred Breath Community who helps individuals restore and optimize their health by calming the nervous system and addressing the root cause of their symptoms. There's a lot more in your bio, but I'm going to stop there because I want to hear it from you. Welcome to the show, Miss Jen. Thank you, Lauren. I'm super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So I want to hear your beautiful journey of how you got to doing the work today. I mean, we both have like similar interests. We're both health coaches. We're both in the oils. How did that culminate to creating this beautiful sacred breath community? And I'm sure there's some self-healing along the way too. Oh, you're, you're spot on. Yes. And it truly is a journey. I mean, I think that's the best explanation for it. So, so yes, I started this journey, I guess, wow, about 10 years ago. Um, and before that, it, it really was a self-healing journey. And I think that's, I think that's so true for so many of us in the holistic health world. Um, you know, we kind of end up there either by, you know, searching for answers for ourselves or for, for that of a loved one. And, um, and that was the case for me. And so, you know, kind of throughout my twenties, I had been experiencing digestive issues, kind of like IBS type symptoms. And for the longest time, I mean, for years, I just managed it. I didn't do anything about it. I didn't talk about it. I didn't, and I didn't really, I tried not to even think about it, you know, but it got to the point where it was just really uncomfortable and, and nothing I tried you know, like outside of seeing a doctor was, was helping. And I didn't really know what to try anyways. I just, you know, was trying to like intuitively, like, is it a food? Is it, you know, um, do I need to exercise more? Like all these things, you know, and nothing was, nothing was really helping. And I found myself uh, losing a ton of weight, um, starting to experience uh, hormone imbalances and, um, and anxiety and just all these different things at the time, not even connecting the dots um, because I didn't understand holistic wellness at the time. In fact, I was working in pharmaceutical sales and that's the model I knew. That's the model I believed in. That's the only option there was in my mind. And, um, and so I finally started seeing some different doctors and specialists on all these different separate issues and found myself undergoing a bunch of different testing, taking a bunch of different prescription drugs and nothing was helping. And, you know, here I am in my twenties and all these different medications. And I just, I felt like there had to be another way, you know, and I didn't know what that was, but I started just reading books on nutrition because I thought I knew about nutrition, but then once I started reading books on nutrition, I realized I didn't know anything about nutrition and um, everything I thought I knew was completely false. And so that just really sparked my interest. It started to open my mind to, to new ways of doing things. Um, and it also sparked a passion in me to kind of go down that path. And so I made the decision to go back to school and uh, study integrative nutrition which I know we have in common. And um, so, yes, yeah, so that was the first step for me. I left pharmaceutical sales and, um, and, and became a holistic health coach. And that was amazing. And I was, you know, on this healing journey throughout that process as well and totally changed up my diet, um, really got into just, you know, cutting out, you know, all the offending foods, if you will, and, um, and making drastic changes in that area. And I saw some improvement, but it kind of plateaued. And then I was doing, you know, a bunch of different functional medicine testing and, um, and all these different supplement protocols and all these different things and found a little bit of help, but, you know, still plateau. And I think this is true for so many people. Um, and so over the years, it kind of just evolved. I was just, I kept trying different things and seeing, seeing what helped, what didn't, and then just kind of kept tweaking things and finding my own like protocol from a food standpoint, from a supplement standpoint. Um, and, and eventually got into essential oils and found those to be incredibly helpful, um, on all levels of health from physical, mental, emotional stress, all the things. 
But what I found out in this whole process is that um, I was not addressing stress at all. I mean, I was addressing perhaps the physical stressors of, you know, inflammatory foods and getting rid of those and um, cutting out some other toxins in the house and things like that. But the mental and emotional stress, all the stuff that goes on, you know, um, in your head, that was not being addressed. And, um, and that was a significant, significant piece. Um, and yeah, the oils helped for sure. Like I would diffuse calming oils, I would diffuse uplifting oils, and they definitely help with the mood. But um, you still need to, to accompany that with some sort of tool, right? And that's where the breath work came in. And when I tried breath work, it totally just shifted everything for me. And I had, you know, being in the holistic world, you know, you hear of breathing techniques and different breathing practices. And so I knew about some of that stuff and tried a few, few different things over, you know, over the years, um, but nothing like a serious breathwork practice. And, and, and some of you may not even know what I'm talking about here because I feel like it's still, while breathwork has been around for thousands of years, um, it's, it's starting to, to make a comeback and become more well-known, but I, I don't feel like it's there yet. And so I was, I was traveling. This is, you know, um, I don't know, a year or so ago, I was traveling out in California. I live in Dallas, Texas, and um, I was talking with a practitioner um, in California, and she, she was like, you know, have you tried breath work? Because that's really powerful, and I think you'd really enjoy it. And by that point, an, a couple of other people had mentioned breath work just in conversation, and it made me say, okay, like this has come up several times. We were just talking about this. has come up several times, like I need to pay attention. Like this is something that is, you know, um, it, it, when you hear it several times, especially in a short period of time, you're like, okay, like I need to tune into that. And so um, I started doing some research and finding some classes that I could attend um, and, and try out breath work. And so while I was out in California, I was able to experience a variety of forms of breath work um, and everything from like Wim Hof to holotropic and transformational and all these different forms of breath work. Um, and they're all just different ways of breathing consciously. And the one that I just fell in love with is called Soma Breath. And it was just such a powerful session. You know, it's like a one hour session. And I just, in all of these, I could not believe how different you could feel just by changing your breath. And again, this is very conscious, intentional breathing. And a breath work class is usually around an hour, hour and a half. Um, and so you're doing this for a long period of time. And it is just a powerful way to let stuff go, you know? all those suppressed emotions, all those toxic negative imprints that um, everything that you're holding on to that just isn't serving you any longer. You're able to let it go in the breath. And through that too, when you're breathing in a rhythm, you're able to really start to harmonize the functions of the body, the mind, calm the nervous system. There's just so, so many benefits that you can get. And of course you can, you feel incredible after one session, but it really is that consistent practice that really leads to these long-term benefits. And so, um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about my journey in a nutshell. And um, so that's where I am now, really focusing on the breath work and the oils um, and, and just bringing that into a holistic model of wellness. Mm -mm -mm. That sounds beautiful. For, yeah, people, I mean, yeah, breath work is getting to be a catchphrase a little bit. Um, and there's so many different techniques, but it forces for me, it's like, you have to be present. Like you said, it's that conscious mm -hmm. breathing and that alone is well worth the practice. <laughs> well worth, you know, yeah. like same, same principle as yoga. You have to focus. You have yeah. your drishti, your point of focus. Mm -hmm. And if you're not focused and you're going a million miles in your mind, your balance is going to be way off. Your practice is going to be off. But breath work, like it is all consuming. You are either in it or you're not. And exactly. 
It has yeah. so many for from a yogic standpoint, like the the prana or life force that they they call the breath. Yeah, getting that fresh oxygen through your body, and a lot of different breath work is for different types of functions in your body and promotes different actions in your nervous system. They're just. So I've never actually done some of breath work, but my own meditation practice, I have kind of like a banda lock mm-hmm. where I, I oh, breathe yeah. in. Oh, yeah, you do the Mula yeah. Mula Banda, yeah. It's, um, I learned Dr. Joe Dispenza's breath work because uh-huh. that's, what, that's what I do. Holy crap, just by slowly breathing up and holding mm-hmm. your breath as long as you can while yeah. you're tightening all your muscles all the way up and letting go. The energy that flows through your head. Yeah. I want to know more about this, more about what, what Soma is. Mm-hmm. And, and what, what did I just des- describe there? And, you know, is that something that is in Soma as well? Because yeah. breath retention yeah. is a big part of this, I think. Breath retention is a huge part. So, And I love that you brought that up because it is a part of soma breath. Um, So soma breath consists of three main phases, rhythmic diaphragmatic breathing, and then two forms of breath retention. One where you hold your breath on the exhale and uh, go into a state of intermittent hypoxia. And we can talk about each one of these stages in detail. And then the third phase is the mula bandha lock. And the mula bandha lock is when you take a breath fully in and you hold your breath on the inhale, and at the same time, you are contracting those pelvic angle, or you're holding in your urine, and you're tightening up all of those muscles. And that allows this energy to come up from the root chakra, up through the spine, up into the midbrain, right? And so this is really stimulating a surge of energy and excitement. It creates a rush of blood flow and oxygen to the brain. And it also serves in boosting the production of those feel-good neurotransmitters, that serotonin and dopamine. And so it is that alone is truly a powerful experience. Um, but when you combine all three together, it is magical, like absolutely magical. And you mentioned, you know, the breath being the source of this life force energy, and that is truly what it is. Yes, when we're breathing. You know, we're breathing, breathing in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide, but it's more than that. We're literally breathing in this vital prana life force energy and we are detoxifying on our exhale. We're breathing out toxins. We're breathing out things that aren't serving us any longer. And so to really just tune into your breath and pay attention to how you're breathing on a regular basis, even that's one of the things I love about breath work is that the practice of breath work is great because it can get you clear and focused and, um, and promote healing on all levels and calm stress and anxiety and all these things. But with Soma specifically, it also teaches you how to breathe properly and slow your breath and breathe through your nose. And, you know, like if you're breathing shallow all the time and fast and rapid and irregular and in and out through your mouth and all these things that are not the way we're designed to breathe, that's perpetuating the stress cycle. You're literally living in survival mode and your breath is not helping. And, um, and so if we start to tune into our breath and change the way we're breathing, we can actually change the state of our nervous system and start to calm down and relax and, and ultimately become more resilient to stress. So that's another benefit on like a, for, from a health perspective and just like a breathing properly perspective, that's one of the biggest. But then there's also this benefit of going into a deep state of meditation, um, tapping into your subconscious mind, rewiring, reprogramming the brain, releasing negative imprints that aren't serving you any longer. All of these things, you know, on a more emotional or spiritual level as well. So, um, so yeah, so there's lots of aspects to it. Um, with Soma breath, so again, the, the rhythmic breathing piece is the primary component. And so when I say rhythmic diaphragmatic breathing, I mean, we're, we're playing music. The music in and of itself is one of the most powerful aspects, I feel like. The music that we play in a Soma session 
is just so transformational. So the music along with the breathing is, I mean, the two combined, and then I usually bring essential oils into it as well. It's just so, so powerful. And we're also bringing in visualizations and affirmations and all of these wonderful tools and combining it into one beautiful experience. And so when we're, when we're breathing in a rhythm, we're literally breathing to beats of music. And so this really helps to retrain the way we're breathing on a regular basis, because when we breathe in a rhythm to beats of music, it helps us kind of stay on track and know that, okay, I'm breathing in for four and I'm breathing out for four I'm breathing in for four I'm breathing out for four. And in the breath work, we're breathing in through the nose because there's a lot of benefits to nostril breathing. So breathing in through your nose helps filter the air, right? It helps purify the air warm the air, moisten the air, all of these things versus breathing in through the mouth. It also stimulates the production of nitric oxide, which is really important as well and has even been shown to fight off um, pathogens as well. So lots of benefits to nostril breathing. So we're breathing in through the nose. We're breathing from our diaphragm. So, you know, oftentimes we find that we're chest breathing, which means we're breathing very shallow. We're not using our full lung capacity on a regular basis. Um, so we're really breathing in from the diaphragm. So you want to see your belly expand on the inhale um, and then kind of relax on the exhale. So we're taking these deep breaths in through the nose and then out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And we'll do different rhythms. Um, oftentimes it's in for four and out for four, in for four and out for four. Sometimes we'll switch it up. We'll increase the pace. So we might be doing into, out to, into, out to, or in, out, in, out, in, out. So we might speed it up, but it's always in a rhythm. And then at the end of that rhythmic breathing phase, we are going into that first breath retention. So you take a deep breath fully in and then fully out. Exhale all the air and you hold your breath. And you hold it for as long as you can. And in the beginning, a lot of times you, can't, you may not be able to hold it for very long, but over time, it's amazing how, how much you improve really, really quickly. And so this is a state of what's called intermittent hypoxia. And this has a lot of benefits as well. And, um, and the, the pranayama name is, um, is called Nishesha Rachaka Kumbhaka. And this has been used to treat a range of disorders over the years, including high blood pressure, diabetes, Parkinson's, emotional disorders, and more. It has anti-aging benefits. Um, it's great for endurance. It just, it, it has a whole host of benefits. And this is where you really find that you can go deep into a meditative state. So for those of you that have trouble meditating or say you're not a good meditator, you will be when you do the breath work. I promise you, because that's how I felt. <laughs> and in the breath work, you get into a deep, deep state of meditation. And it's super powerful and it's amazing. And then we hold our breath for a while. And then, and then I invite you to take a deep breath fully in. That's where we do the, the Mula Bandha Lock. We hold our breath on the inhale. You get, that, you get that other surge of energy and oxygen and blood flow. And that's an amazing experience. Then we exhale and we go back into another round of rhythmic breathing. And so that's what a SOMA session looks like. Um, in a full session, we're doing three to four rounds of that with some awesome music and guided meditation and visualizations and all these great things. So it's a really unique and um, powerful experience. Yeah, I'm definitely going to sign up for a SOMA session after this yeah. because I'm like, <laughs> I've experienced bits and pieces, you know, of that through mm -hmm. my own journey. And I'm like, all of that together, like I've had some yeah. pretty out of this world experiences by just one of those mm -hmm. and to combine all those. And, and, and you're right. Having a practice like a breathwork practice before you meditate. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about not being able to meditate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is a meditation in and of itself. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, it's just, it, it truly is powerful. And, uh, and again, like a, if you were to attend one of my classes, it's going to be probably an hour. And I do a lot of online classes. And, and those are really deep, transformative experiences. And then I also get asked off, a, a lot of times, like, well, are you supposed to do this every day? Like, what does that look like? And I tell people, 
breathwork, Soma breathwork in particular is something you can do every day, but you don't need to do it for that long, like 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. It's a great way to start your day, get clear, get focused. Um, that is a wonderful morning practice. Um, if you can do some breathing techniques throughout the day to just calm, calm you down, if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed. And then, you know, a 10, 15 minute session at night, if, um, if you really want to use it for sleep is great too. So, and you don't even need to do all of those, like do it in the morning or do it at night. I mean, kind of find what works for you, but it is a great daily practice, um, but it doesn't need to take a lot of time. Perfect. I know not all of us. I, I love to get in like a good hour and a half meditation in the morning. And I mean, sometimes it's hard for me to, to get myself up and actually do it, but not everybody wants to have like a yeah. two to four hour morning routine, which is fine. Which is, I find yeah, it's, it's better it's for me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but a 15 yeah. minute, you know, here and there, sometimes it's like, I only have 25 minutes. So that's mm -hmm. what you have. And yeah. when you can incorporate something like that, that keeps you focused, mm -hmm. it's for me, it's this balance between the discipline and the divine Oh, How do yeah. you discipline yourself enough to show up and have these practices that allow you to surrender and let go into deeper either states through meditation or breath work or just in life in general and your own programs and just mm. coming up against yourself is this beautiful dance between this discipline and the divine that this flows right into. Um, and I, I love that you can practice this every single day, um, throughout the day. I mean, if you just notice, you know, I, I kind of started my health journey because I had a lot of digestive issues too, but also okay. anxiety. Yeah. And something as simple as alternative nostril breathing really, really helped me um, just by focusing my breath. And slowing down because we, we have yeah. no idea throughout the day. We're just go, 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 go. And then we notice, like you said, breathing through the mouth. We're shallow breathers. Mm -hmm. Even when you exercise, I try, I try because of this. There's like books and tons of research on this. of Like exercising while breathing through your nose and not your mouth and how it can mm -hmm. increase your capacity, your endurance. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to try to cite anything. I know it's out there if you want to research <laughs> Oh, it is. It oh, absolutely is. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's funny you mentioned that. That's one thing I've been paying more attention to yeah. as well as if, you know, just seeing how am I breathing in different situations throughout the day. And especially if I'm like riding my bike or on a walk and I've gotten my heart rate up, how, like, what is my go-to breathing pattern? And yeah, I do have to focus and say, okay, breathe through the nose and slow the breath a little bit. Um, because it's not our natural instinct oftentimes. Like we kind of lost our innate <laughs> breathing pattern often for many of us many years ago. And, and we've adopted some poor habits. And so we have to retrain ourselves. But yeah, exercising and, and doing nostril breathing can really enhance your performance. Um, but it, it does take practice to kind of change that habit for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know if anybody's been in a yoga class lately, um, but you, you, you hear people with ujjayi breathing, right? That's, yeah. all, that's all nostril breathing. Exactly. And that's hard to do, especially if you I mean like slow flow vinyasa. I get mm -hmm. pretty good. But more power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That gets a little challenging. <laughs> challenging. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, so I'm sure a bunch of yogis would be interested in learning more about this because that's a yeah. part of our fan base here. But who should or who might be interested in practicing Soma breath work? I mean, I personally feel like it's for everyone because it had such a big, big impact on me. I'm like, everyone has to try this. You know, it's so great. And I would say like, you know, for those people that are really struggling with managing stress in a healthy way, or they're dealing with anxiety or depression or any of those situations, breath work is a powerful tool. Um, if you're looking for, you know, healing or rebalancing of physical issues, breath work can be a powerful tool. Um, it, it, it's great for digestion. Um, it's been shown to be helpful for pain management. Um, I have 
her, had testimonials of people like that got headaches it, that it really helped with that. Um, I had one, one lady attend a session who literally, um, checked her blood pressure immediately after a session. And she like, she, it was on zoom and she shared it with all of us. And she was like, my blood pressure has never been this low ever. Like, it's so amazing. It was like in a really healthy range. Um, if you're, a, if you're a business professional and you really want to enhance productivity, focus, mental clarity, concentration, breath work is great. So it serves a number of different purposes. Um, I think everyone can get the benefit from it. Um, there are some people that I would say don't do the, the breath holds, the intermittent hypoxia specifically. And, and so, and that would be people like if, if there's um, a person with epilepsy or specific heart conditions, um, you know, certain types of cancer, things like that, um, unless it's prescribed by a doctor. But otherwise, it is great for everyone. <laughs> Amazing. Now, it popped into my head. People, women who are pregnant are expecting a child. Yes. Is this good, safe for them? The rhythmic breathing, for oh, sure. Breathing, yeah. But, um, but yes, we would leave out the breath retention, yep. but, but do the rhythmic breathing. So that's why I tell people if they're attending a class and they fall into any of those categories, I say when we, yep. when we do the breath retentions, just continue with the rhythmic breathing and, you know, just, you know, I'm usually speaking out, you know, affirmations and guiding people through visualizations and things like that. I say, you know, tune into that, but just keep up with the rhythmic breathing don't hold your breath. And it's still an incredible experience. Yeah. Literally, if you just do the rhythmic breathing with the music, it's powerful. So oh, beautiful. I know so many of my friends are expecting they're all okay. quar quarantine babies right now or yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, I'm like, this would be an awesome opportunity if you're kind of new to this world or not new to this world um, of the, the stress and, and the focus. I think yes. that it's awesome opportunity. And while you were talking, this thing I haven't said in a while pumped in my head. I used to tell clients helping a lot of women with their digestion because of their stress, not what they were mm -hmm. eating. You can exactly. eat your body's weight in kale or superfoods, <laughs> and it still won't do anything. If you are stressed out, your nervous system is compromised, your immune system is compromised. Like it doesn't matter what you feed yourself. <laughs> or even exercise yeah. when you're stressed out and pushed to the max each time it just mm -hmm. hold on a second yeah. i have a dog <laughs> <laughs> honey are you okay yeah. she just opened the door herself and that's new <laughs> oh wow yeah she's, a smart one. she's just gonna come out and uh, hang on i think all right um, so yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you eat your body's weight in kale, if you're a devout yogi or yeah, it, it, it's this 3d approach is what I like to say. It's like mm -hmm. the more work or the more supplements, like you said, or the, the superfoods doesn't necessarily mean more health. Yes. Exactly. And it, it's especially, you know, women, even in the health and wellness field. I feel like we find ourselves like, what's the new supplement? What's, what's the new superfood? Yeah. Instead of just being present and doing a practice like breath work. And, and yeah. you've, you've kind of hinted at this at the last response, but could you give us some more of your testimonials or what, what your clients kind of are uh, experiencing after a breath work session? Because I want to hear more. I love hearing these testimonials. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and I have some great testimonials on my website too and, and on Instagram, but um, in general, I would say like absolutely more calm and peaceful. Like I hear that all the time. Oh my gosh, I feel so calm. I feel so peaceful. I feel blissful. I feel like I was floating on air, you know, like those types of, they just feel light and free. Um, elimination of anxiety. You know, that's been a really big thing, of course, with this year and for the majority of the year, I've had all my breathwork classes online through Zoom, um, and, but it's served really, really a really good purpose. You know, I've had people attend these classes that 
I was even surprised to see there because I was like, I just didn't expect them to come to a breathwork class. Um, you know, we kind of make these assumptions that are oftentimes not accurate, but it, it, it made me so happy. And, um, and, and then to, to hear the feedback immediately after a session is always so powerful to hear just how, how much better overall they feel. They, like a weight has been lifted, you know, they feel clearer, they feel lighter, freer, um, lowering of blood pressure, some have even explained or described having like an out of body experience, you know? Um, so there definitely is a level of, you know, um, spiritual connection here and expansion of consciousness. And so it can be really, really powerful. And, um, and a lot, it's, it's interesting because a lot of the people that explain that are healers and, um, and in this, this healing world already, energy healers, things like that. So they can tap into it pretty quickly. Um, feeling of connection and oneness. And so it's typically a very blissful state, you know, like the stresses of the day are gone. Perspectives have shifted. We feel calmer. We feel more balanced. We feel grounded. Um, sometimes emotions come up you know, and it may depend on what type of meditation we do, what the intention of the practice is. Um, some people cry and that is a good thing. So I tell people like, here are some common experiences. You might feel tingly. You might uh, feel like, you know, you're, you're shaking a little bit. Um, you might get cramping in the hands. That's called tetany. Um, that's just energy moving through you. This is stuff that needs to, to move and, and release. Um, but then emotions as well. You know, you might feel the need to scream or yell. You might feel the need to laugh or cry. These are emotions. Just lean into it. Let them come. Other times, you know, you're just in a deep state of bliss and you're breathing and you, you feel great and, um, and, and it's over and you can go about your day and you just feel a whole lot lighter um, and and more able to to handle the day ahead so so lots of different experiences but all really remarkable mm. yeah and each of our journeys each of our experiences are always so different yeah. I will have to say any type of breath or experience I've experienced you like you said you are moving that gunk that's yeah. been inside of us and that means emotionally and sometimes it can be light and airy and soft, and sometimes it can feel more like a freight train. Yes. It's nothing that you can't handle, but to know that getting, like, the etymology for me of emotions is E and then motion, so energy yes. and motion. And that's what you are doing with these beautiful breathwork techniques and practices is you might not even be thinking about an event mm -hmm. or a program or a desire or whatever a person the emotion will just come over you and i've had that oh, experience yeah. where i i with whole holotropic breathing classes i've i've been there where i was screaming i've been there mm -hmm. where i was shaking the the what, what, what the tetany the, the tetany yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man this, sometimes it's very powerful it um is. yeah i've hysterically started laughing Mm -hmm. crying like anything and it just wasn't i wasn't thinking about anything just whoosh, a wave yeah. comes over you you just have to surrender it's nothing um scary nothing that you can't manage and if you wanted to get out of it you you could totally stop into it stop yeah. stop it but for me and i'm sure you know you can speak in especially having something somebody like your beautiful self leading you through this whole beautiful journey is you're there to grow yeah. and really at the end of the day like you said that experience a deeper sense of oneness yes. and love i mean for me that's what it's all about that's where we all came from people okay. have different words for that mm -hmm. but when you feel even just a little glimmer of that mm -hmm. oh man does that open your eye and your your eyes and your heart up up to the yeah. entire world it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And yeah, I will say, even on those times where you do have some, you know, emotions come up, you, you just, you feel so good at the end. And yeah, you can't plan for what's going to happen. in in a breathwork session, you can't go into it and say, I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to feel this way. Like 
No, you really have to go into it and just surrender and let go. And the way we're breathing helps you do that. You know, it kind of eases up on that resistance that so often we have um, uh, because our our mind is trying to protect us, right? And so, but it it helps us just let it go and um, and then really tap into the subconscious mind. But yeah, I mean the the connection and um, and. And oftentimes there may be visuals, like you might see lights and colors and um, even visions and insights and receive downloads. It's just, um, there's so much that can happen, but yeah, you can't predict it. You can't plan for it. You just have to let it, let it do its thing. Yeah. Let the divine show up for you. Yes. yes. Um, so one of our other favorite topics I have to ask how do you incorporate those oils? And like, do you have some certain blends that you like you can share with us or, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love using the oils in the breath work. And of course, since most of what I've been doing has been online, I just instruct people that are attending, like, if you have essential oils, grab one or use this one, here's what I recommend. And put in a diffuser or put some on topically. But if I'm teaching a live class, I'm usually like, you know, diffusing oils or spraying them, you know, in the room Um, because the oils with the breath work is a really powerful duo. In breath work, we're raising our vibrational energy, right? And so we're getting out of any type of low vibration state of lack or stress or depression or victimhood, any of these things. And essential oils also help raise the vibration of our physical body. And so as we live in these higher vibrations, those low vibration emotions and thoughts can't, can't hang around. So that's when we see the relief of, of some of that stuff. But um, so that emotional healing really occurs as those old feelings start to surface and release Essential oils are helping raise the vibration, but but we need the breath work to help do the work, if that makes sense. So the oils are really fostering the right environment for the work to take place. And so that's what makes it so beautiful to use together. And so I, you know, I offer up to people like if you if you go into a breath work session or if you're doing breath work on your own, like you know, your morning practice. Um, I think it's great to have some sort of intention. And I mean, your intention could be to just surrender. That's a great intention. But it might be, um, if you're doing it in the morning, you might want to energize or boost your mood or gain focus and clarity. So there's different oils that are going to help with that, right? So if you're really wanting to boost your mood and promote positivity and happiness, we know the citrus oils are wonderful. So um, whether you're diffusing single oils like wild orange or lemon or bergamot, those types of oils, that's great. Um, Or you can use one of the blends. And um, so I assume, is it okay to mention doTERRA blends? Oh, yeah. I'm just seeing what I have on my desk. Yeah. You know, I think I'm counting five. (laughs) Awesome. Offhand. And a nice citrusy kind of blend. This is one of their yoga blends. I'm just going to, we're just going to throw it out there. Um, yes. Arise. I have Arise on my desk. That one is so good. That's a great one to use for sure. Another one that I love is Elevation. Ooh, yes. I absolutely love the Elevation. So I'll diffuse that. I also, that's one that I made a spray with that I can use in my breathwork classes. Cause that is just so, it really promotes positive energy. Oh yeah. Um, and happiness. I call it my sunshine in a bottle. It's just so, so great. That's what I say too. Um, <laughs> it, feels, it smells and feels like it. Like It does. It's so beautiful. So I love that one. Um, if, if you're really going into it to promote like focus and concentration and clarity, then, you know, oils like rosemary or peppermint can be really great to diffuse. Um, on, on the other hand, if you're using breath work to calm, you need to calm down, you need to re- to reduce any anxious feelings that you might be experiencing, uh, reduce stress, then calming oils are going to be great to use alongside your breathwork practice. So uh, floral oils are all very calming. So lavender, Roman chamomile, 
ylang ylang, all of these beautiful oils. So again, diffusing it is, is great. Like if you're in a space where you can diffuse oils, that's what I would recommend because breathing them in is going to have the biggest impact, especially from an emotional standpoint. Um, if not, you can put them on topically. So like on your pulse points, on the wrist, on the back of the neck, behind the ears, on the chest, those are all great areas. And, um, and then one of my, I've got several blends that I really like for calming, but I love adaptive. It's one of my favorites and it is the calming blend. And so it's great for reducing stress, um, anxious feelings, things like that. And also promoting a positive mood and positive outlook. So I'm a big fan of that one. Um, and then finally, my most favorite one, probably for anything and everything, but I use it oftentimes in breath work for the meditation piece is frankincense. Ooh, yeah. You know, I mean, frankincense is a must. So I'm usually wearing that topically. Like I'll, you know, put it on my wrist or my chest or my third eye or the, you know, top of my head mm -hmm. and, and have that with me too. Oh yeah, I love to do that before I meditate as well. I'm gonna put like a, a drop underneath my tongue yes. and uh, and get ready to bust yeah. off. Um, another really good grounding blend with before adaptive came out, this was my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. is balance. Yes. That's another it's very woodsy, it's different than adaptive. Mm -hmm. Um another I love it. Yeah. great blend for the so same 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 kind of semi same purpose. Um yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very calming, very grounding, very centering. Yeah, it's, I'm a big fan of that one too. It's so nice. <laughs> well, I would love to hear, so once we got the oils out of the way, because I knew we had to at least touch a little bit of oils. We love yes. oils. Yes, uh, so we must talk about oils. <laughs> um, I would love to hear more about your sacred breath community, and what that's all about and how we can learn more. Awesome, yes. So. The Sacred Breath community is really an online community for anyone who wants to learn more about breath work, how to do it, how to incorporate a breath work practice into your life and receive guidance along the way. Because we know with anything new, it requires the right support, the right tools, the right accountability. And so that's really why I created this community is to give you that, to make it easy, accessible, affordable for you to develop a breathwork practice and get all the benefits from it. So we have live online breathwork classes every month that um, you get to attend as part of being in the community. And there's also a variety of audio breathwork sessions that you can download and play anytime during the day that works for you and your schedule. And these are shorter sessions. So they're more like what we would call a daily dose. So they're a great daily breathwork practice, usually 10 to 20 minutes in length. And there's also a section of a variety of different breathing techniques that you can learn and start to incorporate throughout your day for different purposes. Like there's one for, um, you know, relaxation and stress and digestion. There's one for longevity. Um, there's one for activating the vagus nerve, all of these different things. And, um, and so you get access to all these breathing techniques. And then we also have a, a new expert speaker series too. So I'm bringing on one live guest speaker each month um, to share in their area of expertise, um, you know, all things holistic health and wellness. So you get to learn from a bunch of different people as well. So it's a great community and um, access to some wonderful tools that can help you out. And I'm actually offering a seven day free trial right now. So I would love for you to check it out. Amazing. Yes. I'm definitely going to go check that out as well. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Jen, for coming on the show today. I can't believe, I look at the time and I was like, wow, we better wrap this up. I had so many other things I wanted to jump into. <laughs> Jen, was there anything else you wanted to wrap up that we didn't get to cover yet today? Yeah, this was a blast. Um, the time really did go by fast. Um, you know, last few things, I would just, I, I would love to connect with all of you. So um, definitely check out the Sacred Breath community and um, I'm sure a link will be posted, but it's jimbroils.com. That's my website. It's my name. And so if you go to jimbroils.com forward slash sacred dash breath, that's where you can learn all about the community. 
And then I also have a breath quiz that you can take. It's totally free. If you want to find out how you're breathing, what your breath says about your health, that's at jenborrells.com forward slash breath dash quiz, I believe is the link. So, um, so go take the online quiz as well. And then you can find me on all the social media platforms. So I would love to connect with you. And we'll have all that link. So don't worry guys as well. Um, so thank you again for not only coming on the show today, but also showing up for yourself. Cause I know this holistic health journey is not, you know, the healing journey. We would love for it to be this linear, easy, I know what, how this is going to end up thing. It's not like that. And there's no end point because I know you yeah. and I are the like mind growth of my mindset. When we each day you have to show up and these beautiful practices like Soma breathing technique help facilitate that, that awareness. Yeah. So thank you. And, and thank you for the wisdom and the beautiful nuggets of knowledge and love you shared with us today and every episode, I always ask, how can we, the listeners, return that favor as an act of service and gratitude for you today? Oh my gosh, that's so nice. So, you know, again, connect with me at my website, jimboroyles.com or on Instagram at jimboroyles health coach. And, um, and yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you have, have any questions, you can contact me through my website. But um, yeah, I would love to love to connect with each of you. So thank you again, Lauren, for having me on the show. And I love the, the messages that you're bringing to the world as well. You're so welcome. And remember, open up, surrender, trust, and let your body lead the way. <laughs>